Let's do this. When I'm playing, I generally go crazy. Um, I definitely go like the more piracy routes on a board ships. I'm like, this is now mine. I steal all the sandwiches and put them, you know, in my cargo hold that I have specifically for sandwiches. Every spaceport has a ship technician where you can purchase, sell, and modify ships. Anything I can help you with? It's a bit odd, but one of my favorite ways of customizing ships is um, I make them look like sandwiches. The HMS sandwiches, as I call it. Where I had a, like a giant sandwich. Sandwiches. Thanks again for being with us today. We are just so grateful that you've taken the time and spent it here. You know, as we play it, we're always sharing these unique and special sandwiches. From the first moment I saw the Bethesda Starfield Direct Deep Dive, I knew what I had to do. I was just minding my own business, a legal worker out in the Congolese Apple Cobalt Mines, when I touched this petrified cheese and pass out. I have an out-of-body experience. That was when the Ultimate Explorer was born when Mr. Chibble Bobble Cheese was born. Upon examination, the medical staff would say, what red eyes you have. Yeah, well, all the better to see cheese with. What big nostrils you have. All the better to smell cheese with. What a yellow mustache you have. Well, actually, there's a scientific explanation for this. The nose isn't just for cheese detection, it's also for cheese absorption. With the rapid expansion of my lungs, I can suck in and absorb cheese through the nostrils, like an elephant's trunk, into my bodily cavity, where I can keep it in storage for later. What you think is a mustache is just a splash shield covered in cheese, designed to keep the mouth free and the air flowing. Hair? Nah, man, my head is completely hairless. This is several layers of halloumi that I keep at arm's length for... For emergencies. You see, my backstory is that I have alien DNA. DNA that has been spliced with a block of cheese. A block of cheese that was specifically on one of Todd Howard's sandwiches. And here I am. Hey! Watch it! What's wrong with you? The amalgamation of cheese and mankind that the lab professors always wanted. That humanity always needed. But which side of me is dominant? The man or the cheese? I walk through the airlock into the space outside. I take in the spectacle of playing a new Bethesda game while a ship lands. I speak to this guy and perish because I've removed my spacesuit. You know, it's not like I'm not going to experiment. Anyways, we fight off some pirates. I, uh, I hope this guy's a pirate. This one guy hides behind a rock, but he cannot hide from these hands. Barrett does the least abnormal thing and gives me the keys to his spaceship so that we can go and fight some pirates for him. And this excites me because he has given me the means to fulfill my destiny and find all the sandwiches and hoard them in just the same way that the Bethesda sandwich dev always dreamed we would. I say goodbye to my mind buddies. They're devastated to see me go. I immediately go through Barrett's possessions and put on his pajamas. We arrive on this alien planet, a new frontier, on which would be limitless sandwiches to plunder. Just like Bethesda and the sandwich dev had promised. A sea of stars, boundless in sandwiches, and a potential for sandwiches. I take my first photo for the album this day. Just Mr. Chibblebobble Cheese exploring an alien world as any man would in someone else's pajamas, scoping out the pirate hideout, planning my next move, prepared to do what must be done to find the plunder within. I add a kilo to this guy's body weight and scour the cafeteria within the facility. Place as a whole is pretty barren, but I managed to find myself a single solitary bitten sandwich. I figured there would be many more just like this one out there because I see this note. The devs know that the sandwiches are a big deal. They know this is what it means to be an explorer, uncovering the treasures over the vast distances of space. After all, why would they have heavily featured them in the promotional material of the game? Why feature sandwich dev lady at all? So I press on. This treasure would be mine, and I would find it at all costs. But that was it for the sandwiches in this facility. One bitten sandwich. So I figured I'd make my way somewhere more populated, where I'd have the opportunity to find more. I am ambushed by some pirates outside. But you see, just as I have alien DNA spliced with a brick of cheese, I too am a boxer of the highest caliber. And so I make short work of them. Unfortunately, I'm not able to travel the cosmos yet until I take the ship back to the starting city to meet the fellows at Constellation. I am immediately floored at how goofy every NPC looks and surprised to discover that everyone here actually makes Mr. Chibble Bobble Cheese look ordinary. He looks like he fits right in. This thing looks like what I'd see at the end of my bed. 
during sleep paralysis when I was a child. If man was made in God's image, and this thing was made by Todd Howard, just what was I seeing at the end of my bed all those years ago? <laughs> she looks weird. I desperately searched the city for a sandwich. Just a morsel of nutrients situated between two slices of bread, but no luck. I searched the vendors. Nothing. What cruel fate is this? That this metropolis is not home to one sandwich, if even already bitten? Was Mr. Bibble Snorbin Cheese's enormous cheese detector not working properly? Was I doomed to fail? I purchased some cheese and some bread in the hopes that I could simply make a sandwich myself. For where we fail at finding, perhaps we will succeed in creating. I returned to the lodge, and we were introduced to Sarah. This woman hates Mr. Chibbin Flibbin Cheebs, but I love her so very much. Have you- have you seen how her head whips back and forth like a pendulum on space dust when he hit her in the face? That's mad. I explore the lodge and find their kitchen. I have a look at the cooking station and my heart sinks that there are no sandwiches. But then I gaze upon the grilled cheese. The grilled cheese. Of course. This is a sandwich. It's not the same sandwich, sure, but this is this is what will fill the void while we look for actual sandwiches. For it was only the authentic sandwich that pleased the Bethesda sandwich dev. I have to do some dialogue with Sarah before I'm permitted to travel, so we do just that. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've been to Mars. And I return to the ship. Pick up the bitten sandwich on the table, go to our cargo bay where we'll be storing all of our sandwiches and grilled cheese, and do just that. All of the storage and inventory management got me thinking. Yeah. I need to travel far and wide and find more authentic wild sandwiches, and I need to save up some money to buy ingredients to make more grilled cheese. So we take Barrett's ship to Mars, where I'm certain the opportunities will come at us hard and fast. I search the bar and restaurant areas, but nothing. I search the vendors, nothing again. I help this woman with a bench press. I proceed to take photos of me helping this woman with her bench press, realizing that maybe Mars hasn't cultivated the whole wholesome sandwich culture of Earth, perhaps the Bethesda sandwich dev populated their favorite settlements with sandwiches instead. So I return to New Atlantis on Jemison and have a good look around the cafeterias. Nothing. Yes. The vendors. Nothing. Though I did manage to find some more grilled cheese ingredients, so I return to the kitchen to cook. And Sarah follows me here. She has no choice, you see. Todd is bounded to me as long as she wants me to complete her quests. But I will not complete her quests. I have to cook. The grilled cheese calls me. But the question remains, where will I find the sandwiches to please our gracious Bethesda sandwich dev? We've exhausted the main hubs on Mars and Jemison so far. We roll the dice, admire the loading screen of us helping the woman with a bench press on Mars that one time, and land at Neon, a main hub city in the game with plenty of locations to explore and many vendors to sell us sandwiches. The Trade Authority, nothing. The Weapon Store, probably didn't even need to check, but, but nothing. Tranquility, nothing. Not even the regular merchants have any. I punch the tranquility lady in the face. Sarah hates this, but is still happy enough to evade the police with me. What, what a gal. We've only incurred a fine of 650 credits for bashing someone in the face, so that's not really a big deal. So I take to the stars for some questing and exploring of pirate-occupied abandoned space stations. There do not appear to be any sandwiches up here. But we're not only looking for sandwiches, we're also looking to progress Sarah's quest, which happens to be the main quest, because in short, she hates being around me. No way! I am not going to help you murder this... I have punched too many innocent people in the face for no reason in my pursuit of sandwiches. This isn't entirely my fault because Bethesda have been very secretive of the sandwich locations and the lack of treasure for the abundance of effort I'm putting forth is really riling me up. But in the spirit of avoiding spoilers, I will not divulge the details of these quests. All, all you need to know is that they're a mechanism by which Mr. Chibben Flob and Cheese will be abandoning Sarah at the earliest convenience so that we may pursue the sandwiches unchained by morality. But for now, you'll have to take my word for it that I search absolutely everywhere I can for these elusive treasures, including treasures traveling to this ship. On board, we are met by a colony of people, blah blah, something something, they want to claim the world below. The only issue is the world below is already inhabited by people and both parties are absolute psychopaths. Like, one of the dialogue options is to try and persuade the colonists on the ship to simply travel to the other side of the planet and settle there. What's the issue? We've been doing this on Earth since forever. For example, the United States and their mortal enemies, Afghanistan, but apparently this isn't good enough for them. Both parties want the entire planet for themselves and, and, that, and that will be that. I'm tasked with the power to decide what to do in the situation. And of course, the most natural thing Chibble Bobble Cheese will do is side with the faction from which he can get the most sandwiches. I search high and low on the colony ship and find one singular bitten sandwich. It's a pretty cagey ordeal. But as with all Bethesda games, we drag the sandwich away from the eyes of its owner, drop it on the floor, and in keeping with galactic food hygiene standards, we pick it up within five seconds so that scientifically there are no germs on it. This could have been one bitten sandwich and one unbitten sandwich, but just because this man is holding a sandwich doesn't mean that it exists. You see, the physics in all Bethesda's games are simply modeled on how Todd Howard himself Self experiences the world, and he has not yet developed object permanence. This enrages Chibble Flibble, and we take it out on Sarah. You can't get rid of me that easily. Mm. I'm go down. The final score for this colony ship is one bitten sandwich. The rods of surviving on the planet they want to land on is not looking good. Uh, are you shooting at flies now? 
On planet side, we find a bitten sandwich in a restaurant, but the owner is sitting three tables apart, and instead of simply taking the sandwich back, they have removed every stolen item in our inventory, including our shotgun that we like to blast Sarah in the face with. This is unacceptable. I wasn't about to let this slide. So I used the time stone to roll back my save. Drag the sandwich around the corner. Hey, that isn't yours. Ignore Sarah's moral belittlement because I, I can't do anything about it. She literally will not leave me alone until I complete her quest. And what ensues with the theft of a bitten sandwich is an elaborate chase through the streets of Paradiso. Paradiso security, get back here. Who will win? A heavily trained and armed security force or one barefoot cheesy boy wearing Barrett's pajamas? Hi. I spend some time with my fan aboard the ship until the heat dies down, lament that I have far more grilled cheese than I do actual sandwiches, and go to complain to the senior corporate ownership of the resort. I slam the succulent on their desk. They give me two choices. I can get the colonist ship upgraded and send them to another planet, or allow them to stay on this planet, but as payment they will have to work for the current colonists until such a time that they have paid off their debts and work. Sarah's upset and says this will make them indentured slaves, so obviously she's just never had normal employment before. And with the scores level at one bitten sandwich each, the grand search begins to decide the fate of these long journeyed people. I gaze upon the sunset, and it's at this time that I realize I've been going about this all wrong. Not only had my lengthy search of the resorts showed an obvious bias against the settlers on their ship, but I'd exposed myself to some hard truths. There was something I was doing wrong, and I had to go back to research, to compile the evidence laid out before my very eyes. You see, the Bethesda sandwich dev, deity to Mr. Chibberbobble Cheese, claimed that she had found the sandwiches by means of piracy. How could I have been so stupid? How could I have been so blind, so empty to the answers laid out before me? I would need to walk in her footsteps, follow her guiding light. I would need to be a pirate. But the problem with the ship Barrett gave us is it's kind of rubbish. So I'd need an all new ship. Sadly, we lacked the funds to do any such thing as yet, meaning we would need to get a job. Fortunately for us, we've heard about this little place called the Red Mile, where we can earn fame and riches. Please tell me you're not going to make us run the Red Mile. Sarah hates it here, but she has no guts and will literally not go away until a hand in her quest. So we bring her along. <laughs> she, has to, she has to suck it up. This establishment is lawless and run by a gang. So I try to make a strong first impression by simply executing the man this guards have at gunpoint. <laughs> This doesn't really go to plan. I throw my name into the hat to run the Red Mile, which is this gauntlet type thing where if you successfully make it to the goal and back, you are given riches beyond imagination. And we can use the riches to buy an actual functional pirate ship. While I'm being announced to the crowd as the next challenger, I pick up this fancy ice bucket and the entire place starts shooting at me. And Sarah runs away as if I'm the second coming of this one Austrian dictator guy. Anyways, the Red Mile is built up as this impossible task, disguised as a blood sport on which people make bets and make massive amounts of money. A sport Sarah herself finds a Abhorrent. So imagine my surprise when I find her standing in this airlock ready in the arena waiting for me to enter. Imagine my surprise when I fall through the roof of this elevator, trapped in place with no escape, ripped from my immersion, and reminded that I'm in a dark computer room playing the launch of a new Bethesda title. I fight the first enemy in the Red Mile, and I'm thinking this must be a miniboss because Jibblebobble over here be swinging and taking damage like it's Elden Ring. But ah uh, nah, as it turns out, this was just one of the dozen enemies here. <laughs> Easy money. Easy. Ooh. Hey, you want some? Want some? Yeah, take that. Okay, I'm out. See ya. That was a that was a lot of fun. You know, I had I'd, had a good time. It wasn't wasn't difficult. wasn't stressful. I'm not sweating out of every orifice in my body right now. If you fancy yourself. Two thousand credits. <laughs> That's all I get.
That's fine because I can get gainful employment here in Neon. We witness and ignore the police brutality. Pass the time by taking more photos for the photo album to spice up our loading screens. Visit the police station where that one guy got police brutality gives us a glowing review for a new job. You see, if we speak to this fella, he wants you to run a narcotic called Aurora. But the only way to get it is to speak to the arrested man's contact who helps you pick up the stuff. Oh, we know exactly who the contact is and where she's employed and we conclude that we also gain employment there so that we can talk to her. Not to simply find her after work and speak to her there. Oh no, that would be too fucking normal, wouldn't it? But first, Numbnuts over here asks us to go and disappear someone in a warehouse in town. He's expecting us to get this man to leave Neon by persuading him to suicide by nine gunshots to the back of the head. Instead, I persuasion check him to leave peacefully and then whack him on the head while he's not looking. This upsets Sarah again. She hates me now, surely. She- She's also the only living being in this warehouse, leading me to believe she actually rats on me to the guards, getting me this huge fine. She hates me so much now that I opt to leave her in an elevator while I enjoy my gainful employment at the drug factory. We're advised that this work is chemically very unsafe and that we have to wear this biohazard suit for our safety. Anyway, we do the work in the factory. Each cycle of this work nets us 400 credits and a reprimand for not working fast enough. And every few cycles we get to talk to that one bitch here who lets you know where the illegal narcotics are and run it for more cash on the side. This set of quests can be repeated until we have enough credits to purchase a new ship. I return to my ship to move my sandwiches into my inventory because I don't trust this game to remember that they're there when I switch to another ship, lest we lose them all. <laughs> You accidentally hit me! And I get to work creating the most powerful ship in the known systems. And the best part is, this isn't a new ship at all. It's a modification of Barrett's ship, of Constellation ship. They can do nothing but sit there and watch me spend tens of thousands of credits on upgrades to their ship. And for what? Bigger guns? Sure. Bigger jump range and shields? Yes, a form-fitting space-faring vessel to draw the ire of our enemies in respect of our comrades? But of course, you see, I had been going about this all wrong. If I was going to find the sandwiches, I would first have to become the sandwiches. I try to tie up some loose ends, such as returning Sarah to Constellation by finishing her quest. But as I sit down in the pilot seat, she stands over the console in protest, her enormous ass taking up the entirety of my screen. I decorate the cockpit with my loot, sit down in the pilot seat again, take our sandwich on down to Jemison so that we can drop off Sarah. Mr. Chippendale Cheese contemplates the mysteries of the universe for a moment, and we decide we do not care. Despite hating us, Sarah says she wants us to continue working together. She then wants to give us an award. Welcome to Constellation. Piss off. Understandably, she has a lot of work to get through. I scour the city for grilled cheese ingredients and grill that cheese. Place all I have to show for my adventures in the corner of this cockpit. I travel to various other cities to scour for grilled cheese ingredients and see if any sandwiches have respawned yet, but there's not much out there. I spend some time going through various bases on a multitude of different planets, but all I find is pain and suffering. Our sandwich takes to the skies again, lootless, filled with nothing but disappointment. I spend some time out in the cosmos. Mentally, I'm in a funk. I feel like I've been defeated by the sandwich. Every grilled cheese I'd craft had ceased to become a thing of comfort and had become a symbol of my failure. The Bethesda sandwich dev didn't say she crafted grilled cheese. She said she'd plundered sandwiches. But what was I doing? I couldn't stop. The grilled cheese, it brought me this sense of comfort. Like I wasn't alone in my ship cockpit. Wasn't drifting through space meaninglessly, sandwichlessly. I condemned the people on that colony ship that wanted to settle on that one planet to indentured servitude simply because I was in a bad mood. I gaslit them into providing me the materials the planet side settlers needed to accommodate them, so I didn't have to collect it all myself. Between beautiful loading screens, the sandwich frontier would touch down on many a strange planet, and we would collect materials, slowly but surely gathering our wits to go again, but also slowly but surely not collecting sandwiches. Our search took us to many depths, both dank and unforgiving. The funk had had us stooping to many lows, such as, but not limited to, committing acts of violence on our one companion who could tolerate our behaviors. It wasn't until we'd finally sold these people to the megacorps running that one beach resort in Paradiso that it dawned on me how much joy the sandwich ship brought me. Look at them. Look at all these people crawling out of the sandwich. Our great and wondrous sandwich. I make some final modifications to the sandwich and we take to the stars again. The blanket of shining lights that doth illuminate our way to more sandwiches, hopefully. And yet, the sandwiches were nowhere to be found. I put the game down for a day and prepared to do some piracy tomorrow. And that's when it happened. I wake up to this message on Discord. My man's found a whole sandwich. He said he won't be telling you where he found it though. 
What the fuck? Dumbledore said calmly. Update, he now has four of them. Could it be possible? Are there really unbitten sandwiches out there? I respond the most human response. What's da fucku? Ho ho! You come to me in your time of need, seeking information about sandwiches. Are you going to make me... Mm, big. You bet your thick ass I am. I counter with some guilt tripping. If I don't know the secrets in one hour, I will be laughed back into a normal job market. We reach a compromise. Okay, I'll tell you, but under one condition. You have to find this specific plushie. Its name must be Bibble, and it has to sit on the bed for the remainder of your playthrough. These are my terms. Now, this isn't so bad. These are reasonable terms. After all, the plushie couldn't be that hard to find, right? I'd been doing this for many, many hours. I could use any help I could get. I navigate the conversation as any linguistic master would. No. Please comment. No, we don't negotiate with frogs. Eventually the frog relents and tells me to go to the Valo system, to a science outpost at Shorun. You must be thinking, but best guest, you're going to search a whole moon for a base? That seems unrealistic. Well, I agree, my esteemed viewer, but you see, how Starfield works is when you first find a new planet, it already has some landmarks for you to start with. And if you so choose, you can then explore outwards in that landscape, how you see fit, and discover more out there. Provided you don't run into any invisible walls, of course. I figured if I went to the Volo system and to Shorun, then perhaps there's a predetermined science outpost there. But as it turns out, I find nothing but pain. The game generates random points of interest for you on a per-person basis. Meaning the science outpost on Frog's Man's game is not necessarily the science outpost in Mr. Flippin' Flop and Cheese's game. Alas, if one Frog's Man is capable of finding four unbitten sandwiches in one science outpost, then surely I can too, right? I put my plans for piracy aside for the moment and explore the very science outpost on the moon. I dispatch pirates with the hatchet I find because I'm immensely masculine. There's a certain charm to carving your own path in the early days of a Bethesda title. You get to experience the title's most vulnerable moments firsthand. Absorb the fever dream of floating computer terminals and disinterested robots for yourself. But despite the charm of it all, I find nothing but plenty of ingredients for grilled cheese. They bring me joy, but not as much joy as, say, four unbitten sandwiches would. I travel to the next landmark on this dead moon. It is a riveting time. This right here has been sped up for your viewing pleasure. Another science outpost. There are no pirates, but there are also no sandwiches. I look around. There's absolutely nothing. I clear another science outpost. I check the lockers. But nobody stores the run-bitten sandwiches in their lockers. Another outpost. This one has a cafeteria. No sandwiches here. It has a cooking station and ingredients for grilled cheese, though. I run for three and a half minutes to the next science outpost. This seems like a cozy place. It even has a kitchen. But no unbitten sandwiches. Why is this happening to me? Why is it that someone who can play the game for only a couple of hours find four unbitten sandwiches, but I, clocking 22 hours on the save, cannot find a single unbitten sandwich? Was I looking in the wrong places? Was I even looking properly? Am, am I blind? Well, I'm just not sure. Was Frog even telling the truth? With that trail dead, I launched the sandwich to the stars, where we would do as the Bethesda sandwich dev once did. Piracy. Simply blowing up your target would ruin the sandwich, so this doesn't work. You get much more loot if you disable your target with electromagnetic weaponry and then board. And this is what we do. We do as the Bethesda sandwich dev told us to do when that deep dive trailer dropped. I can only imagine the absolute horror one might feel as this weird cheese alien tears its way through their ship, killing everyone on board. All your friends, all your family, only to witness with your last breath, some muttering about finding sandwiches. Our piracy starts small, some spacer ships, some derelict ships. We find what we can, and we help ourselves of the spoils. But soon enough, there are those that come to us for help. I had a good feeling about you. We just need a... Oh no. <sighs> Our moral compass wasn't so much turning from good to bad. We were never good. We were simply a cheese man. We do all sorts of bad things to try and find our sandwiches. Breaking and entering being one thing. Oh, my oh! oh shit! <gasps> and sometimes calmly leading rogue sentient guard robots into public spaces while we flee for our lives. While the general public are handling that, we browse the meals on our table. Dry toast and sausages. This is not a sandwich. This is an abomination. Sometimes I'd make unforgivable mistakes. And I'm not talking about that one time the sandwich ship obliterated a tourist ship, no, no. That time I had merely assumed a ship of tourists would have some sandwiches. I was unable to board them, so I had to destroy them. There couldn't be any witnesses. It's not like my ship was inconspicuous. It's not like there was more than one wanted pirate ship out there to identify. That looked like a sandwich. No, the unforgivable mistake I was talking about is that one time I lifted this plate in a public cafeteria, got a fine for it, and arrested. No, no, don't come over here. <gasps> <laughs> Everything's a jump scare today, what's going on? This is it. This is the crime they catch me red-handed doing. Lifting a plate. I am taken. I am questioned. I refuse to do as they ask. I am released from prison. 
ye na 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 ye ye na rodeo. I go to Mars for some reason. I remember that I'd already looted everything here and then go to make some grilled cheese to make me feel better. At this point, the grilled cheese is like crack cocaine. I need more of it. I need more grilled cheese. I deliriously wander the cosmos in my sandwich ship. I'm defeated in my search for sandwiches. I have no purpose. I have... Some bitten sandwiches, but no unbitten ones, like the ones featured in the deep dive trailer. I have failed. That is until I arrive at the den in the wolf system. I speak to the bartender. There it is. One whole sandwich. Unsullied by the bites of mortal men. Right there. In front of me and it can be mine for 71 credits. I have so many credits to give. Please give me the sandwich. I look around for more. If there's one, there could be four, right? Just like, like, just like Frog said, right? I search the trade authority kiosk. <gasps> Another unbitten sandwich and 17 grilled cheese. I return to the ship, skip systems, celebrate with the adoring fan. Our journey, it was beginning to bear fruit, but something was amiss. I get to the cockpit of my ship to put the sandwich down and they're not in my inventory. How could this be? As it turns out, it be quite simply extremely. I didn't buy another sandwich and 17 grilled cheese at that trade kiosk. I'd actually sold them. So I return to Wolf. I dock at the den. I go to the trade authority kiosk and there's nothing listed in the buyback screen. The sandwich and the grilled cheese, they were gone for good. In the space of 10 minutes, I had gone from a huge success, done a full 360 circle and failed utterly. That is until I looked at my save games. I had one sitting there at the den. The success of everything hinges on what happens here. Does the vendor still have the sandwiches in their inventory? Is it randomly generated and they don't have it anymore? But what's that? Another 360 dodecahedron. It looks like our luck has doubled since the last time we met Christopher Lee. Two unbitten sandwiches. It's double success time. I try to place the sandwiches on our dash, but I knock down one by the chair. It's stuck and I can't reach it. Bethesda physics, I understand. A simple grenade will free it. I journey forth with glee. I cannot see past what's on my dash, but that's okay because the sandwich collection has begun. And you know, with all the bitten ones too, we're collecting quite the stash. Bethesda sandwich dev might just be proud. Or would she? You see, I'd continue my crusade across the galaxy for some time, boarding countless ships, exterminating dozens of occupants, and find not a single sandwich on board. I'd double check the interiors of many of the major cities. Nothing of the sort would be found. Not a single solitary unbitten sandwich. In fact, the only unbitten sandwiches I had found were at vendors. Why is it that Mr. Chibblebobble Cheese, a man built to detect the cheese in the sandwich, is not able to locate any unbitten sandwiches at the same or similar frequency as, say, Bethesda Sandwich Dev? Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I've looked at the evidence, and I've looked at the evidence, and I've drawn some conclusions. Put your tinfoil hats on because it's about to rain funk in here. You see, I think Todd Howard himself personally sent me these messages, posing as the frog in my Discord server, and removed access to any and all natural occurrences of said sandwich in my game. But best guessed, how would he do that? Because Todd the God works at Bethesda, that's how. In 2021, Microsoft acquires Bethesda. Microsoft's most far-reaching product is the Windows operating system. My computer runs a Windows operating system, and it also runs Starfield. Don't you see? It's not that Microsoft has acquired Bethesda. It's that Todd now has access to the Windows mainframe. It's not out of the question that he's installed Skyrim directly onto the master Windows, infecting it and all of our computers with all kinds of bugs, and backdoors directly into our Bethesda gaming experience, and directly into my Starfield save game, with which he can simply disable all sandwiches. But best guess, this doesn't make sense and I don't find this funny no more. Why doesn't it make sense? It just doesn't. Well, why doesn't it, you stupid bastard? <laughs> It's simple. He doesn't want me to find sandwiches. He wants me to play his game to distract us from the truth. The Bethesda sandwich dev might find sandwiches, but this shot right here, this one where she has dozens of unbitten sandwiches in storage, she didn't find those sandwiches. She may have found one or two of them, but the rest of them? No. Bethesda Softworks, like many other content creators out there, they faked it. In a world where so many things can be doctored, I think Bethesda used console commands to add sandwiches to their inventory and drop them onto this table right here, perpetuating a meme about sandwiches that is so far reaching that even your butch neighbor's wife, Dorothy, can't reach around that far. The sandwich is a lie. A great and unforgivable sin. Perhaps the biggest controversy of our entire lives. I return to the lodge. I make some grilled cheese. I slash Sarah in the face. And that's when I notice it. Lately, I find myself spending more and more time on this is exciting. Did, did Todd grant me my one wish? Is this his one mercy? 
Why now? Why here? I returned to my ship, the place I had found such comfort and such torment. I placed the sandwich on the dash and come to grips with the fact that perhaps Todd wanted to show me that the grilled cheese had led me astray. For all grilled cheese are sandwiches, but not all sandwiches are grilled cheese. Thanks to the patrons, you are the cheese that splats upon my cheese shield beneath the nose but above my mouth, and for that you have my eternal gratitude. For the rest of you, thanks for watching. Leave a comment about your favorite cheese puns. Here are some sent to me by Todd posing as frog to try and distract me. Cheesy does it. Cheddar luck next time. I go to go. I'm making a brie line for it. Fetter luck next time. Okay, so what now? Stay safe out there. Oh.